Hello lovelies and welcome to Artist Sway Monday on Tuesday. It's been a rough week. But still, it's time to get zen. Art Sway Monday! The lesson for the week is recovering a sense of safety. What Julie Cameron means by this is to go through any recovery, you need a circle of support and you need to feel safe. Otherwise, you won't make a change. This can be from your family, your friends, the boyfriend, girlfriend, teacher, whomever. The first section of this chapter is entitled Shadow Artist. A shadow artist is someone who neglects their own artistic needs to support other artists. I'm going into opera, so I'm actually going full tilt into my dream. But there are variations to this. I mean, when I was an undergrad, I was really unhappy, and I would not pursue other creative topics that attracted me because I thought I would be neglecting my singing, which is completely wrong. Doing this the first time has taught me that time spent on other creative endeavors not only keeps me sane, but it also makes my singing better, because you need some fuel to be creative, you know? Why do we feel the need to limit ourselves? It comes from childhood and things that we learn about creativity from adults that we trust and those around us. It's important to look into why we feel the way we do about things. One of the tasks for the week was to um, time travel or look back in time at people and situations that affected the way I feel about making my art and was pretty emotional for me actually. I'm going to tell one story about a situation that happened to me that really made me doubt myself. Thanksgiving of freshman year was particularly difficult for me. We were all at my aunt's house having a potluck Thanksgiving and I had had a lot of family drama with my grandparents at that point and because I was a freshman they thought that it was about time that I started thinking about the next step which was undergrad and at that point I wanted to be an actress so I told them I wanted to be an actress which was a really bad idea because they spent a long time reaming me about this dream I had and telling me that I can't do it, I'm going to leech off the family, where they weren't the most supportive people of my passions anyway, and they weren't very nice to me as a person. The thing about this is I decided to become an opera singer shortly after that, and I am making a performance career happen. I went to my undergrad for this. I went to my, I just finished my graduate education where I attended Rice University with a full scholarship. I'm going to Utah Opera next year, so what people say to you does not reflect reality, even if it really hurts. So ideas like this get into our head, and then we start convincing ourselves that it's true. Like, I convinced myself that pursuing an artistic career is risky enough and going away from the path to do multiple things would hurt me. What do we do to combat these negative thoughts? We have to affirm ourselves. So a task for this week, after we do our morning pages, was to list a list of affirmations every day. Hopefully affirming yourself with positive thoughts will make you feel like the positive thoughts are true and not necessarily the negative ones. So how many days did we do our morning pages this week? I did six out of seven, which I think is pretty good because I was moving from Houston to temporarily to Pennsylvania. So I think that was pretty good. I wrote a lot about the rational worries that I have, which I need to let go of, and stress of packing. I worry a lot about things that I know I'm going to be able to complete, but I just worry about them, and that's not really healthy, so I should stop. Did I go on an artist date this week? I did. And here's some pictures from my artist date.
Around the corner from my home is White Marsh Hall. It was built in 1920 by Horace Trumbauer and demolished in 1980. It was supposed to look like Versailles, and it did. But times come and go, and manners had to make way for suburbia. Here I am reminded how empires fall. Nothing lasts forever, whether it be a love affair, or the buildings that surround us, or the graffiti on the wall, things will change. French aristocracy fell, these aristocrats fell, and the manor fell into disrepair. The columns are broken and the stairs are molded. It's almost impossible to recognize that this place was once a place of socialites, balls, princes, and opulence. What once was a wedding present became a burden and was sold to a chemical company. But there is a beauty in this ruin, like reading a tragedy. The love is in the details and also the metaphors. I wonder if love lasts longer than death, for the love that lived here was so vibrant and strong. I also wonder if a love of something ruined is more beautiful than a love of something new. The house and gardens may be gone, but there are still the shades of the tall trees and the wild flowers poking out of the grass. I feel safe among history and foliage and able to write. Though time hasn't been kind to White Marsh Hall, White Marsh Hall is kind to me. Were there any issues that kind of way of my recovery this week? I really don't think so. I think I did a great week despite everything I had to do, so I'm proud of myself. I think this chapter is a great introduction to the process is very light. Lots of the tasks that you do this week are things that you should be doing anyway, so it's just getting into the rhythm of the process. She uses anecdotes of her students, and, you can, and the concepts that she introduces are really clear, so it's easy to understand what she means. I couldn't pro probably tell you if someone else is writing this book. So, yeah. If you want to join me, make your own videos, and I will look at them and promote your videos and talk about my interaction with you, so please do it. I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to this channel. It would mean a lot to me. I have no subscribers yet, so you could be the first, and I will give you all the love in the world. Uh, leave a like if you like this video, and love you lots. Bye.